Hello guys once again and welcome to another episode of biology. Today we are looking at the respiratory system in amphibians like the toads, okay, like the frogs. But specifically we are looking at the toad today because the toad is very, very unique. All right. And of course, um, do not forget that this tutorial, these episodes are brought to you by the O3 Schools Jam CBT practice application. We're going to be using the app in our study in searching for questions and also in answering what questions. Okay. So if you have made a decision that you want to pass your jump exam at once, please ensure you download that application immediately and start practicing your way to success. Okay. Some of you are stingy to yourself. Okay. I will not pay the activation fee. It's too cheap. It's too cost. It's too simple. That one is your problem. If you want to pass your jump at once, please ensure that what you download the application, activate it, and use it to your benefit. Okay? So let us see a jump pass question from the application. Uh, this is a 2014 question number 18. It says, the use of moist cane for respiration in amphibians is known as A say continuous respiration, B says vocal respiration, C says uh, pulmonary respiration, and D says cellular respiration. Okay, so we'll come back to this question and many more at the end of the class and not before because here at OTD schools, we pride ourselves in giving you value first. Okay, so let us teach you first and then if I've taught you, answering questions will be very, very easy for you and your exam will be very, very, very easy also. So please download the app and what we'll start immediately. Okay, so now let us look at the respiratory system in amphibians. Okay, specifically the toad okay the reason why we're looking at the toad is because the toad is very very unique the toad has three different methods three different three three one two three different methods of respiration at different stages in his what in his life okay under different varying what condition under what varying condition it has what three different methods for respiration okay and of course some of the organs that it uses for respiration includes uh, one, which is what the skin. Okay, so if it uses the skin, we use we say it is what continuous what respiration. When it uses the skin, we say it's continuous what respiration. Also, if it uses what the mouth, the mouth cavity. Okay, we say it's what buccal respiration. Okay, then likewise, if it also uses what the lungs. Okay. Which is what now pulmonary water respiration. So these are the three methods that the toad uses to, to respire. Three different methods under different what conditions. All right. So we're going to what enjoy ourselves in the class board. Okay, by looking at what each of those three what uh, methods of respiration. Okay, the three major organs. Okay, are what the skin. Okay, the mouth and what the lungs. The toad uses the skin. It uses the mouth. It uses the lungs for what for respiration. So please take note of what of that. Okay. So if I'm an examiner, this kind of question I'll set for you. Okay, and what and catch you. All right. So so please ensure you take note of all of that. So now continuous respiration. We said. That is what for skin, okay? Where what the toad uses what is moist skin, moist, moist skin, M O I S T, where it uses its moist skin for respiration, okay? So the first one is the continuous respiration, that is the skin. So now we we'll say that the skin of the toad, the skin of the toad is thin, it is moist and richly supplied with blood what vessels. Okay, the skin of the toad is what is thin, it is moist, and it is richly supplied with blood vessels. Okay, and of course, it occurs predominantly, this type of respiration occurs predominantly when the toad is in hibernation or when the toad is under water. Okay, so when it is on when it's in abanation, when it is sleeping, okay, when it is underwater, okay, this type of respiration or takes what place. Okay, so it occurs mainly predominantly when the toad is in abanation or underwater. If I'm an, if I if I am an examiner, I will just say, okay, which of the following uh, methods of respiration is used by the toad when it is under what water, okay? Or which of the following type of respiration is used by the toad when it is in hibernation, okay? So to simply know that that is what continuous what respiration, where it's using the skin, where it's using where it where it uses moist skin, moist skin for what for respiration, all right? So now what happens? Uh, how does this happen? Okay. Uh, during this process, where it is, where it went is in abination, oxygen diffuses directly through the skin. 
oxygen diffuses directly through the skin into the blood and then carbon forms which is co2 diffuses out okay why it is underwater why it's in abination oxygen diffuses directly through the skin it diffuses directly through the skin into what into the blood and then carbon forms are diffuses what out so that is what continuous water respiration where what uh, amphibians use what uh, moist skin for what for respiration, all right. So take note of what of that, and this occurs especially for a toad when the toad is underwater or when it is in in hibernation. So please ensure you take the notes down and what and study it. It's very interesting, very lovely, nothing difficult to what to talk about. Now also have what the buccal respiration. And if you hear buccal cavity, you know that I'm talking about the mouth. Okay, you hear. Buccal cavity is something as mouth cavity, so the toad can also use what the mouth for what for respiration. Ah, uh, does it do this? The toad can respire through the moist lining, through the moist lining, okay, of its what buccal what, or mouth cavity, okay. So the toad can respire through the moist lining of its buccal cavity, just like what sometimes uh, like our mouth is what is moist. Okay, but sometimes it can be dry as the ocean, as the desert. Okay, but of course the uh, the toad uses what the uh, uh, the uh, the moist lining of its of its buccal cavity for what to respire. All right now, how does it do this? Basically, it does this. It does it. when does it do this? It does this. It's when when the toad is at rest. It basically uses what this buccal respiration when it is at rest. Okay, when it is at rest, it uses what buccal respiration when it is what when it is at rest. And how does this happen? Okay, first of all, it lowers the floor of its mouth. It lowers the floor of its mouth, drawing hair into the walls into the buccal cavity. It lowers the floor of the mouth, drawing hair into the buccal cavity. Then oxygen diffuses into the blood vessels in the mouth lining. Okay, oxygen diffuses into the blood vessels in the mouth lining, and then carbon dioxide diffuses out. Okay, so the hair is then expelled, is then expelled, is then removed without passing through the lungs, without passing through the lungs. So that is how a toad respires through the mouth. Okay, so we say the toad can respire through the moist lining of its what mouth cavity, okay, or buccal cavity, and it does it when the toad is at rest, when it has rest. So how does it do this? First of all, it lowers what the floor of its mouth. Okay, it lowers what the floor of his mouth, drawing hair into the buccal cavity. All right, and as it draws hair into the mouth, okay, as it draws hair into the buccal cavity or the mouth, oxygen diffuses into the blood vessels in the mouth lining, and then carbon dioxide diffuses out. Then the hair is expelled, is expelled rather without passing through the lungs. Okay, so the lung what does not what take part in what in these because it also what can also what do this what through the lungs and in that process we we'll call it what the pulmonary respiration pulmonary respiration through the lungs okay this one occurs mainly when the toad is on the land and active when it's on the load when, when sorry when the toad is on the land and it is active so the toad can stay on water okay if it's not staying on the water it can stay what on what on land all right so now this occurs mainly when the toad is what is on the land and very very active okay when it is on the land and very very active how does it do this it opens its nostrils it opens its nostrils and lowers the floor of its buccal cavity drawing air in okay it's what it opens its nose the nostril of all the toad is open it opens it and lowers the floor of its buccal cavity then drawing air in okay then the nostrils close the nose closes and the buccal floor rises. Okay, the nose then closes and then the buccal floor rises. First of all, the nose was opens and lowers what the floor of the buccal cavity, drawing air in. Then the nose now closes. Okay, but this time the buccal cavity, okay, is not lowered, but of course it's been what raised. Okay, so the nose closes and the buccal floor rises, forcing hair into the lungs. Okay, so this is how it achieves this. And gaseous exchange occurs in the alveoli, in the alveoli. 
okay, in the what? In the lungs, okay? Gaseous exchange occurs in the alveoli in the lungs. And how is hair expelled, okay? Through what this through this pulmonary respiration, air is expelled by the contraction of the muscles of the toad. Okay, so the toad contrasts what is what is muscles, and then air is what is expelled. All right, so that's how what it works. So the toad is very unique. It uses three different methods, three different methods of what for respiration, which you should take note of. It's what the the continuous respiration, the buccal respiration, and the pulmonary respiration, okay? And of course, your examiner set questions from this, so it is expedient, it is necessary that what you know them all, okay? And understand how what the process would occur, okay? So now, quickly, we'll talk about uh, the tracha system, okay? So we'll talk about what uh, the respiratory uh, breathing, what, in, uh, in insects, in insects, or what we call the trachea. Is it the trachea? Okay, let's say let's say it's the trachea was system. Okay, the trachea system or the trachea was system. Any way you would like to pronounce it. Okay, so now let us quickly what uh look at what the trachea was system. Let us see how what insects what quickly what respire. All right. So now for insects, uh, an insect usually consists. Usually consists of tiny openings at its side. Okay, an insect consists of tiny openings at its sides called the spiracles. Okay, insect consists of tiny openings, tiny openings, tiny openings at its side, which you call what the spiracles. The spiracles. Okay, then of course, the spiracles. Which are present in the insects, all right? Uh, they lead into tubes. They lead into tubes that we call the trachea, okay, or the trachea. They lead into tubes called what the trachea, okay. And of course, this branches into finer tubes, okay. This also branch. This trachea branches into finer tubes that we call the tracheoles, called the tra. Cues, okay. Then this now reaches what the tissue of what of what of the insects, okay. This now reaches the tissues of the insects. Let me go back again. I said an insect what usually contains what uh, consists rather of what of tiny openings at its side called the spiracles, okay. And then these spiracles they what they branch into what tubes that we call what the trachea, and then what this trachea further what branches, okay, into what. Final tubes called what the tracheoles, all right, and then which now lead to the what to the tissue of what of the insects, okay. But one important thing you should take note of is that the trachea system is present in certain anthropods. The trachea system is present in certain anthropods, such as what, uh, such as centipedes, centipedes, and millipedes. Millipedes, okay. Other than insects, the trachea system is also present in what in a uh, in, in 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 anthropos like what like centipedes and what and millipedes. So please take note of what of that, okay. So they respire by means of what of the trachea, okay, and the trachea was system, all right. This is the respiratory system or breathing rather in what in uh, in insects, okay. So the 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 insect have what. Tiny openings at the side called the spiracles, which lead into tubes called what the trachea, leads into final tubes called the tracheals, which now leads to the what the tissue of what of the what of the insect. Okay, so please take note of what of all of that. We're going to see some questions. So the centipede and millipede, they, they respire through what the through the trachea what system. That's one important thing you should take home from here. Now let us see some questions and we are done with this so that uh, for the next class, we'll be talking about something very more uh, uh, important to us, which is what uh, respiration and what's in man, all right? So let us quickly see some questions. 2024 number 29, 2024 number 29 says, continuous respiration is carried out by, continuous respiration is carried out by, A says the frogs, B say snakes, C say birds, D say mammals. Obviously, we know that what continuous respiration is is uh, uh, is carried out by, by amphibians, and the frog is an amphibian, a toad is an amphibian. All right, so correct answer there is what is option A, which is the frog. Twenty sixteen number forty four. It says that in centipedes, 
The exchange of gases is carried out through the A say cell membrane, B say body surface, C say lung book, D say trachea. Okay, so correct answer is what is the trachea. Okay, we mentioned it. All right. So of course, uh, 2014 number 18 also. 2014 number 18, it says, the use of moist skin for respiration in amphibians is known as moist skin. It's continuous respiration, okay? It's not pulmonary. Pulmonary is lungs, okay? So it's also not buka. Buka is what is mouth. But of course, it is if it is skin, then it is continuous. A says continuous, B says buka, C says pulmonary, D says cellular respiration. Okay, so correct answer there is option A. All right, so there are so many other questions on this application pertaining to this topic. Okay, you will encounter them as a study. You will encounter them in your mock challenge. You may encounter them in your main exam. Okay, so please ensure you keep studying and keep being what at your best. My name is Master T. I'll see you in the next class. We'll start talking about respiration in what? In man. See you there.